Hey everyone, today I'd like to talk about my reading habits, uh, how fast do I read, how many books do I read, uh, how I annotate, uh, all those different aspects I'm going to talk about today. So I sort of have this three component system to my reading. I will read a work of nonfiction, a work of fiction, and either a collection of short stories or a play at a given time. The mornings I reserve for reading my the work of fiction that I'm reading at a given time. Uh, the reason being is I'm awake, I'm sharp between the ears, I have a cup of coffee, and I have the mental acuity to, to immerse myself in a work of fiction and really imagine what the author is trying to, to tell. And so I'll read, I'll read the work of fiction in the morning and I'll read it slowly. I really want to uh, digest the words as best as I can. So that's, that's why the morning is reserved only for fiction. Towards the end of the day, after a day of studying or working or what have you, I will go to my work of nonfiction and I'll still, you know, be sharp between the ears and I'll really try to stay engaged in my reading. I don't like to, I really hate it when I like, I'll read a page, but like I, I'll, I'll read the whole thing and not remember anything, you know, when you do that. Um, and then you have to go back and read the page from the top again. I hate it when that happens. So usually at that point in the day, the work of nonfiction is when I have my pen in my hand and I'm writing in the margins or taking notes while I'm reading. So I'm actively engaged with the text, but I don't have to worry about sort of picturing a, a story that an author is trying to say. So that's why the, the nonfiction is reserved for later on in the day. And then when it's nighttime, uh, end of the day, really tired and I'm in bed and I still want to get a little bit of reading in before going to sleep, I'll read uh, the short story or a play and... The reason being is a short story, you know, concise, straight to the point. You can, it's, they can be ranged from like, you know, three to whatever, how many pages. And so low commitment and I can usually get one in before bed uh, or else I'll, I'll read a play and I'll read like uh, either a couple of scenes or an entire act and then go to bed. And, and so that's how I like to divide my reading fiction in the morning, nonfiction in the evening, and then the uh, a dramatic short story or play at, at night. So right now, I'm sort of breaking my rule a little bit that I just established. Uh, I'm reading two works of nonfiction and I'm reading a play. So no works of fiction right now at this given moment. So the, the first work of fiction that I'm reading is The Life of Samuel Johnson by James Boswell. The reason why I've picked this up and I'm just, I'm just getting into it now and I'm so excited to read it is I'm really getting into literary theory and criticism at this time, and it was only inevitable that I wound up in the hands of the regarded as one of the greatest literary critics of all time. I've talked about him in my bookshelf video as well as my Shakespeare video. Um, I'm sort of becoming obsessed with his works and his life because he lived this large, you know, he was this larger than life character basically. And the book, The Life of Samuel Johnson, is infamous. I'm sure many of you know what I'm talking about. It's this whopper of a book, and it just it's the complete portrait of Samuel Johnson uh, as portrayed by his very close friend and confidant, James Boswell. I am just so excited to read this book and read it slowly and just really get to know Dr. Johnson, as he is so called, since he was the one who uh, wrote the first... Uh, iteration of the English Dictionary. That's what sort of cemented himself as this legendary figure, but as well as for many other reasons, but um, I'm just so excited to read, to get through this. The second work of fiction I'm, I'm reading, and I'll make a video on it soon because I have a lot to say about it, is The, the Peregrine by J.A. Baker. And uh, as you can see, I have a few tabs here of passages that I really liked. And this is a wonderful book. I'm treating this like a fictional book right now at the given moment because the, the, the dialogue, not the dialogue, the, the prose is so rich and such, at such a high caliber that I really have to be paying attention to uh, engage with the text. And so this is what I'm currently reading in the morning. And so the play that I'm reading right now is Shakespeare's Othello. And the reason being is I've been very drawn or I've been really interested in the character of Iago. Uh, I've read a lot of Harold Bloom's commentary on Shakespeare, and when he talks about Shakespeare's characters, he talks about, or his most famous characters, he talks about Hamlet, Cleopatra, Sir John Falstaff, and then Iago. And what Bloom says about Iago 
and this is very because uh, Bloom wrote that famous his famous work uh, the anxiety of influence and he talks about Iago as a character his influence on John Milton and how because of that influence John Milton portrayed Satan in Paradise Lost and so and I talked about this in a different video is I'm very fascinated with literary influence and so I'm, I'm reading Othello now and I'm really focusing on Iago. That's what I'm really honing in on on my first read through of the play. And then eventually when I get to Paradise Lost and I'm reading the character of Satan, I'm going to really pay attention to, to the dialogue and see how the two compare. Um, so that's like one of the many things I have on my uh, literary, I don't know if bucket list is the right word, but checklist. I got to check out Iago and I gotta check out the dialogue of Satan in Paradise Lost. And then I have this uh, a collection of short stories that I'm, I'm going through at the current moment is uh, the collected stories of W. Somerset Moham. Uh, he's probably my one of my favorite writers and so I'll usually read uh, a short story from here from time to time. So that's the video today. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, do you have the same reading habits as I do? Do you have do something different and you have any suggestions for me? I'm always looking up to, to looking to change up my my reading habits and try something new. So yeah, just leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to chat with you. I also want to talk about the really rapid growth that, that's happened on this channel. I went from like 14 subscribers to I think almost 700 now in the, in a span of like two and a half weeks, which is very daunting and kind of intimidating. And so I just wanted to share my appreciation and thank you all for subscribing. This is kind of wild that there's 700 of you 700 of you watching that blows my mind this is i'm so excited to to talk with you guys and and sh share my love for books and i love having i've had so many great conversations in my past videos in in the comments and so yeah just leave a comment and i'll be more than happy to chat with you uh this this really this is, makes me so excited to talk about books I also want to give a quick shout out to my friends Matt and Tyler. They just started their own YouTube channels and they also talk about books. And I'll leave the links to their channels in the description box below and you should go check them out. So that's it, that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one.